Welcome back to Marvel Media Podcast, where we talk about all things media, especially Marvel. I'm Blake, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Alex and Josh. And welcome to episode 14 of Golderfold, where today we will be giving our dream of some kind. Now, that's a very broad statement here. Dream Dream, project, basically. Dream project, yeah. So it could be like games that never came out or games that you would want to see movies that never got a sequel movies that you feel like should be made anything so um josh i feel like since you pitched this idea you have something in mind so i do i'll I'll have you do the honors and go first i mean i I based my whole early life around this this idea and this failure of an idea but uh (laughs) so when i was like 13 um i came up with this game idea that i thought you know oh, i'm for sure gonna make i'm gonna create my own gaming company called like jk productions all that and then in high school i even like designed logos and all that stuff for it you know so yeah i believed in it went into video game design as well for the sole purpose of hoping to design this game in the future until i realized i couldn't do the art part of uh video game design and i uh, changed my major last second but basically the game idea the premise of it was um so when i was 13 these things just some of these ideas have kind of been done now um for example for honor has done one aspect which i'll talk about and total war is a strategy game that kind of does this but not really um but when i was 13 i envisioned a game where you're gonna start off and you can choose three factions, right? Um, it would be a hand-to-hand combat type of game. So it'd be like knives, ax, swords, shields, all that type of deal, right? And you choose a faction and these three factions will have a live constant 24 seven updating map where you're battling for territory so you can choose a spawn location so like a map of the game to fight other factions to control that zone and when you're fighting it will be actually a strategy game a rts strategy game where you have your armies and have like a unit cap going into it so each player will have a unit cap and it'll be like 1v1s 2v2s or 3v3s but where this kind of differs is the strategy game you can actually click one of your units one of your individual units and go into a first person and play as that unit while your AIs are in the battle. So you can kind of actually lead your AI army of being the top, you know, general, but also playing alongside them and fighting other players for battling grounds. So like for honor kind of did that. They had a map where they had three factions. It was like samurai, uh, knights and Vikings and you kind of battled for territory in game modes. Um, And the reason why I mentioned Total War is because that would be kind of the strategy type game, uh, army battles that I would be thinking in a vision, but you actually could just select a unit and actually play as them. And I personally, I don't, I would love that. I would put countless hours into that as well as I think it'd be fun. Also people would be posting on social media about like, hey, your faction needs to gain ground. If it actually kicked off, that would be pretty popular of people beefing jokingly posting like on TikTok and stuff of like oh you're on that faction nah bro your ass stuff like that so that was kind of my envision project of what i wish i could have produced obviously it's a lot but that would have been my only solo dream part project interesting i, I have one question because it, yeah. that is interesting do you <clears throat> did you ever have a working title for it or was it still kind of just like Fluid. No, I didn't ever actually like create a title because then, you know, my 13 year old self got distracted with creating the title of the company, which would be like JK Productions, obviously, you know, and creating a loco logo for it. And it was like JK Games. I, I still have the logo and all that today for it. But no, I never created a title. Um, but I did try to create when in high school, when I took actual video game design, I did try to create models for it. And I spent, I mean, literally every day working on it. And that's when I realized I just like, I can't do the art part. And I kind of lost the joy of it because I I could do the coding, but I I wanted to do both. And if I couldn't do both, then I wasn't going to love it. I didn't want somebody else to be able to like fully 
take the art part. I wanted to be able to like contribute by actually designing it myself too, you know? Right. So yeah. Man, that was my uh, my dream project. It's pretty interesting. That is, yeah, not where I thought you were gonna go with it, but hey, that that was interesting. Um, were, were the three factions gonna be like anything in particular, or, or were you just like um, you just knew it was gonna be three <laughs> factions? I just knew it was gonna be three factions because it would limit the scale of how many models and different models you need, as well as it kind of adds that third party element to it instead of it just being a 1v1 so that way there's kind of more options to choose but not too many options as well as just envisioning the map you know if you think of almost like a pie graph i just thought split that into thirds and seeing it visually would be more pleasing of three factions going at it than it being a 1v1 or like four factions or more okay so that's kind of how i looked at it okay cool it's a cool idea i mean it, it could still be something you never know i mean you you may have just well, given yeah, somebody sure. an, an an idea so john wick can take it somebody yeah Give somebody will percent. steal it from you you know hey. that's how capitalism <laughs> works yeah and hey if it ever happens then i'll play it solid okay well uh i'll go next with my dream project um me, I never had the big ambitions for, you know, making a game like, like Josh over there did. So uh, my thing is a, a sequel that, n that never got made. It is a real shame. And that sequel would have been Real Steel 2. Real Steel <laughs> yes. was a solid movie. I really enjoyed that movie as a kid. Um, Hugh Jackman, I mean... Guy was like mostly known for uh, for Wolverine at, at that time, but then he did this this one movie with director Sean, I think it's Levy or Levy. I mean, the, the guy since then has, has gone on to direct like probably some of the best episodes in Stranger Things. He directed Free Guy. He's he's gonna direct Deadpool three. That he's he's already signed on to do to do that. So I mean, obviously, that, I think that was one of his first films, but. I've always had like a soft spot for that movie. And I, I've always felt, especially since the way it ended, that there should have been a sequel to it with the, with the with an actor and like the, a character like Hugh Jackman's main protagonist was the, the, the main robot, his kid. I mean, I just felt like that whole story was so well done. And it was, you know, kind of sad where it's like you, you heard rumors that there was supposed to be a sequel a sometime in, yeah, like sometime in 2013, and then again in like 2015, and then kind of it's just been, you know, a ghost. There's since a then. Wikipedia page for it since then, yeah, because like it was that much in faith that like it had a release date even. Yeah, um, that's how it, strong the rumors were. Yeah, dude, it, it was it was a solid movie, and then for like the effects at the time were like top notch. I I really mm -hmm. enjoyed like the whole the whole story. Like I felt like. Out of all these stories that have um, kind of these character, these main characters, and then you have like these bigger than life characters, for example, Godzilla, Transformers, you know, stuff like that. You you always seem to really kind of forget the human characters, and in this movie, I mean, obviously the the robots are like kind of the forefront. That's kind of what you're going for. But you know, once once you're in there, like the story of this father and and this kid, you know, that he kind of didn't know he had or kind of just abandoned can't quite remember the movie it's been a while since i've seen it but i know it was kind of like you know he he didn't want to deal with the kid he he was down deep you know he was uh mm -hmm. he was he was going to take fights in like a random ranch fighting a, a bull because he he like he was this big um well-known boxer turned uh robot you know kind of controller person i, I forget what, what they're it called was like exactly, a trainer but... yeah trainer yeah. yeah and uh yeah so then he then you like see how like hard he fell and kind of where he was and then as the movie progresses he starts to kind of you know take notice that his kid is really into the stuff and then his kid finds this this robot trains it and then then uh it has like it's one of the unique ones because you can like no shadow boxing one of like the first programmed uh, robots to, to have that then Hugh Jackman's character starts to train it 
to become kind of more human like and it, it, it makes it a long way obviously it's at, at the end of that movie it doesn't win even though it should have won um and I, I feel like that definitely left for like a, a sequel, you know, to, to be made. And, that, and I felt like if they would have brought that, you know, the same team back, even if they, they were older, I feel like, you know, it, it would have been a sequel that a lot of people would have shown up to, um, me included, because I, I feel like that that is one of those movies where I feel like should have gotten a sequel. Yeah, it, especially it earned a sequel it. for the CGI budget too for it. But I yeah. agree with you, though. The biggest thing I loved about Real Steel was that you know, a big issue with, you know, CGI main characters is that when you have the humans in it, they're typically the worst part and they take away from the movie. And you're just, you're basically, you know, a lot of times you go to these CGI uh, big budget movies, you're there for those big fights, those big CGI fights. But in real steel, I mean, the humans added to not only the CGI characters, but also added to the movie. I mean, the whole point of him having shadow boxing was kind of also adding that underdog um, component to it, as well as it being like old tech versus new tech as well. So, yeah, I, I definitely agree. A sequel to that should have happened and it would have been beautiful if it did. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if he knows, but like the director, he's known to do this kind of stuff. He, he adds that kind of like human element and it's always kind of, you know, has a, a meaning behind it. I feel like he should have gotten to do a sequel to that. I'm sure they probably uh, want to do it too. Dude, honestly, I, I think when we came out in 2011, 2012, 10, 12 years later. I yes, because, like, yeah, Xbox 720 was advertised on it. I remember that, baby. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm i telling you right now, if they ever decide to do it, bring back Hugh Jackman, bring back you know the kid actor who is now older now. I think Evangeline, Evangeline Lilly, who plays Wasp, was was, was there as yep, the, she the was love in interest. There. Bring her back. She was pretty good in that movie, too. I, I am going to go and watch that movie. I, I'm just I'm telling you right Thanks. now. That is a dream project for me. All right. I like that. Blake, <laughs> what you got? Uh, you know, mine's, mine's kind of kind of along the lines of Josh's in a way. It's like a hasn't been created yet thing uh, that I think would be like cool. And uh, obviously, no surprise here, love love superheroes, love that stuff, right? And I think, I don't really know, haven't thought it out too far. It's just kind of like, a, I think it'd be cool to have like a uh, like world where like everybody has superpowers. But the difference is like the people who have like the like, quote unquote, better powers, like the super strength and all that stuff, like they can only use their powers for a very short time. And it's like very draining. And then like the people who have like the... Uh, you know lesser cool powers whatever you want that to be like they can do their power for like a long time and like it doesn't drain on them for a long time you know what i mean so like if somebody's super strong like lifts up a car they're a little tired after the fact you know what i mean so i think like a world like that but then you know of course gotta add in some extra stuff like there's something that like somebody say if they had like that strength power they could like there's this thing in there that like if they take this then they don't have like the draining effect right so then you have like a bad person who has the ability to have super strength and they're after that and you have somebody else who has like a uh, lesser cool power that they can do for a while and they're trying to like train to like you know fight that person but like like i said just something like that factor i just think like it'd be cool to see like a world where it's like everybody has powers and then you have like these you know this battle of the people who think like just because their power is better than others that they should have the ability to like do it as long as they want and just like uh, dominate the world and so uh something of that kind of you know facet i don't really that know is, but uh, I, th I just that'd be like cool. a dope, it, a dope it, world i just kind of think to add on to the like uh did you guys ever play the saints rose games yeah yeah i feel like if you added the saints row kind of art and comedy to that type of game and it also added maybe uh because you said you know some people have all characters who have different powers like what if you started the game and you kind of had like a 2k nba 2k my career like crater right you know where you have only certain attributes you can select and add to and then that's how you start the game as your protagonist and then obviously you have like your team up with your ai buddies but then add the saints row art and comedy right. to it i think that could be a crazy ass fun game that is a cool idea right just something like that where you're just trying to like you know 
you have this person that has, I don't know exactly what power it would be, but you're just trying to like learn how to like control it better and like use it in like a better way yeah. since you can do it forever. But, like something like that, you know, I think that'd be pretty cool. There's there is a lot of lacking uh, superhero idea. games. Right. Like, I feel like it's, there's like least, lacking good ones. I mean, right. we've it's, really it's just oh, yeah. a, it's really just Spider-Man and Batman. Yeah, pretty much. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's just I think it's a very yeah. open market. So I think video games obviously dominate like the movie world, especially with the MCU. And I think mm -hmm. if you make a good video game that includes some kind of super, you know, hero, superpowers, whatever, I think a lot of people would play it. I like that. There's a solid idea that, honestly, I, I could see like you you have that idea for like a game, that like that's such a good idea that it could possibly like make like grow beyond just the game. You know, like like some some of these other games that that spawn like movies. I feel like that that'd be a solid like either TV series that kind of. I mean, is yeah, inspired would, from, from I think game. for me, the main reason would be I think the video game market is so bland right now that Scares, I just think you know. Yeah an actual good video game that's a little bit different than, you know, the obvious Battle Royales dominating our sport game, just something a little bit different. I just think something like that would really be... I mean, heck, you know, if it happens, you want to make movies, you want to give me a cut, let's do it, let's make movies, letts like TV shows, Facts. you know what I mean? Oh. But I just think the video game market is... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A little, a little dry right now. Daisy, bro, we've been preaching this, right? NFL, hire us as GMs, and then movie producers and game designers, once again, hire us as well. Facts. We'll make y'all rich. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Boom. All right. I think yeah, that we, uh, we basically... Could be like a trio of ideas. Bro, we can be Three different we all know. industries. We all know. Nice. But I think that kind of wraps up this video of our kind of dream projects, I guess you could say. Uh, you know, let us know in the comments below what you think of these, if you have any of your own kind of ideas, whatever, you know, video game, movie, TV series, something else, you know, let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, check out us on social media, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, make sure to follow along on Apple Podcasts for the podcast version, dropping at the same time as so these come out on YouTube. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.